A human body is an amazing biological system having extraordinary ability of adaptation to its surrounding environment, although, under certain circumstances, external harmful stimuli may outweigh this ability and consequently cause serious issues to the organism. Basic component of living organisms is water, which molecules form vast majority of all substances within the human body. Water molecule itself is formed by one oxygen atom getting together with two hydrogen atoms. Each atom contains a nucleus and an electron shell in which electrically negatively charged electrons occur. Oxygen has two electrons on its inner orbital and six others on outer valence shell from where they can be easily shared with other atoms. To be fully satisfied, oxygen atom requires two more electrons, which can be provided most often by two hydrogen atoms in the real world. Atomic oxygen occupies more than two times more space than hydrogen, therefore shared hydrogen electrons spend much longer time in the outer valence shell of oxygen which becomes negatively charged and hydrogen positively charged. This state affects overall interaction of this molecule with others. From the outside view, H2O has two electrically oppositely charged poles so we can consider it being a dipole, much like a bar magnet. In the proximity of many such objects, they turn towards the other ones by oppositely charged parts. This applies to every object containing two poles, including a water molecule. A positively charged portion of the water molecule will turn to a negatively charged portion of another molecule. The hydrogen bond is formed being strongest of all intramolecular forces acting between individual molecules. In an ideal environment, this process would specially organize a large number of nearby water molecules into a pure water. Exposed to an external electromagnetic field strong enough for overcoming hydrogen bonds, water molecules will turn against the direction of the external field, positive portion towards a negative electrode and vice versa, negative portion to a positive one. Changing external field's polarity causes a corresponding change in the rotation of polar molecules. In alternating time-varying fields, individual molecules' position is constantly changing, but moreover, with increasing frequency, its rotation and motion is getting faster and faster. More movement means more mutual collisions more frequently, where each collision converts molecules' kinetic energy into the form of heat. The tissue heats up. To maintain optimal body temperature, human body uses reasonable thermoregulatory mechanisms of which blood flow is clearly the most important. It supplies tissues with oxygen and nutrients, but also effectively drains away excessive heat via blood flowing into more distant parts where it can be easily dissipated by body surface. If, however, the temperature rises uncontrollably even with maximal utilization of body regulatory capabilities, Excessive heat may cause severe tissue damage. Particularly vulnerable to overheating adverse effects 
are body parts with difficult heat dissipation, e.g. due to their limited blood flow, which is the case of our eyes. But endangered are also tissues requiring a low temperature such as reproductive organs. Human body cells use a myriad of diverse proteins to perform many biological processes important for ensuring that the whole organism is functioning properly. Performing these tasks is allowed by their functional spatial conformation, which determines how they interact with other substances. Excessive thermal movement of water molecules may, after a certain time period, cause breakdown of weak chemical bonds maintaining protein's functional shape. Spatially disorganized proteins are no longer able to perform their tasks properly. Actuated heat shock proteins, abbreviated as HSPs, help to those unfolded proteins restore their proper shape, in which they can perform expected biological tasks, consequently allowing cell survival in an emergency situation. In addition to excessive heat, they respond also to a variety of other harmful stimuli, ranging from free radicals and heavy metal effects to presence of an artificial electromagnetic field. Genetic information of HSP-70 contains several sequences triggering protein's response to different harmful stimuli. The nuclear base sequence containing guanine adenine adenine sentence induces response to excessively high temperature, whereas cytosine chimine cytosine chimine sentence triggers a reaction to presence of an artificial electromagnetic field. Human body cells have self-destructive mechanism triggering cascade of biological processes leading to cells death if seriously damaged to such extent that they cannot be repaired and their further existence would pose a threat to the whole organism. Excessive activation of HSPs in damaged cells may inhibit this self-destructive mechanism known as apoptosis, so in the end, diseased cell will survive and can replicate itself via cell division process. After a while, population of defective cells may ultimately replace a healthy ones. Cancer arises. According to the current level of scientific knowledge, there are well-documented mechanisms of interaction between artificial electromagnetic fields and living organisms with harmful effects on human health. Let's discover the most important ones. Biological processes within our body originate in the very nucleus of individual cells, where genetic information resides as a double-stranded DNA. Sugar phosphate backbone holds one of four nucleobases at a time. A particular nucleobase can be bound only to the complementary base of the opposite helix. While adenine binds chimine, guanine binds cytosine. 
The bases themselves are connected to each other by a hydrogen bond. Its force is relatively weak, but their large number create a cohesive force capable of holding the two helices together. Shall this cohesive force be overcome by some external repulsive force, the DNA strand would break. The external electromagnetic field may affect the position of electrons of hydrogen bonds. This establishes regions with a stronger electric charge, which creates a repulsive force. If this force is stronger than the cohesive force of hydrogen bonds, the DNA strand will break. The damaged DNA is more susceptible to mutations, but also the transcription process may be blocked if the damage persists for a long time. Transcription is the very beginning of protein formation, since proteins are required for most biological processes, blocking their formation may result in health problems. Electromagnetic fields may cause formation of free radicals in large amounts which are harmful to the organism. Removing the hydrogen's proton nucleus from a water molecule produces a negatively charged hydroxide ion. It will attract free radicals that tend to absorb an electron of nearest available molecule converting it into a free radical. The damaged molecule remains with spared, unpaired electron. To be fully satisfied, it needs to pair with another electron. The molecule will tend to absorb it from the nearest molecule, and the same process continues until an antioxidant comes into play, a substance with excessive electrons donating them to free radicals before becoming free radical itself. Formation of free radicals may also be beneficial. Our immune system produces them using the enzyme NADH oxidase, which is located on the outer side of cell membrane. In microbes presence, the cell activates the oxidase that begins to form oxygen-based free radicals. This can then damage the microbe and kill it. If an electromagnetic radiation causes activation of this oxidase, newly formed free radicals may indirectly activate the receptor for an epidermal growth factor, which then triggers a sequence of biochemical reactions leading to transcription of genes regulating cell cycle, which may result in cell division. Excessive growth factor activity thus often accompanies various types of malignancy. Free radicals are also produced during an energy extraction in our cell power plants, mitochondria. Their inner membrane is covered with a system of five electron transport chain complexes in which energy conversion takes place. Simple sugar molecules are used to gain electrons that travel through the chain until they are eventually spent in the fourth complex during conversion of oxygen and hydrogen into the water. The electron transport causes movement of hydrogen cations. Fifth complex ATP synthase then moves cations back into mitochondria's interior. This movement causes mechanical rotation of the synthase, leading to the conversion of an ADP molecule and one phosphorus atom into the ATP, 
our biological battery in fully charged form. The smooth course of the process is usually being disrupted by free-flowing oxygen, which can cause leakage of electrons from the transport chain, especially near the third complex. Zerping an electron by oxygen creates superoxide anion, extremely dangerous free radical. It is so dangerous that the body uses a special enzyme, superoxidismutase, to convert it into more stable hydrogen peroxide as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, this is not always the case. Electrons have an intrinsic rotational feature called spin. When two electrons meet, their spins can be oriented either in the same direction parallelly or in the opposite direction antiparallelly. To form a chemical bond, the spin's orientation needs to be opposite antiparallel. The electromagnetic field may energize the superoxide molecule thus changing the spin of a free electron. This prevents chemical conversion to a more stable hydrogen peroxide, giving the superoxide a precious time to rampage through the cell. It may attack complexes containing iron, which is released and can participate in the sentence reactions. An iron molecule is oxidized by hydrogen peroxide. It loses its electron and breaks down peroxide to a highly reactive hydroxyl radical and hydroxide ion. During second collision with the peroxide molecule, iron is reduced, acquires an electron, restoring its original form. The hydrogen peroxide is broken down into a hydroperoxyl radical and a hydrogen cation. As long as hydrogen peroxide molecules are abundant, these phantom reactions can go on and on forever. The entire cycle is usually relatively slow, but a microwave radiation with the characteristics of Wi-Fi networks speeds it up significantly, which results in the rapid production of free radicals in large amounts. In the presence of a microwave radiation, an iron reacts with water as well, supplying sufficient energy and ensures transfer of an electron to the iron, while the water disintegrates into a hydroxyl radical. Hydrogen peroxide can also be broken down by electromagnetic radiation without the presence of an iron. If peroxide is supplied with enough energy to excite electrons, a photolysis occurs, decay into two free radicals. The most effective is infrared radiation near visible light, which can be found in sunlight and infralamps. Free oxygen radicals can be produced near the cell membrane, composed of a phospholipid molecules bilayer. Popular targets are carbohydrates, as free radicals can forcibly remove hydrogen atom from them. The interaction with cell membrane thus leads to lipid peroxidation, irreversible damage triggering a chain reaction of oxidation of neighboring phospholipid molecules. The lipid peroxidation can be stopped by the presence of an antioxidant or by collision with another free radical. Extensive cell membrane damage leads to loss of electrical potential and a cell death. If free radicals come to the close proximity of DNA, they can cause serious issues in many ways. 
tearing off a hydrogen atom from the sugar phosphate backbone leads to its disintegration and subsequent destruction of the entire helix. The most abundant damage is alternation of nucleobases. Free radicals can directly tear off the entire hydrogen atom or join the base, both causing mutation of the DNA strand. Fortunately, a nuclear DNA has repair mechanisms minimizing the risk of permanent damage. However, if number of free radicals exceeds the number of available antioxidants and the DNA damage rate exceeds its repair rate, a permanent damage occurs affecting all subsequent generations of cells. In addition to a nuclear DNA, we also have a special kind of DNA that is found only in our mitochondria. Damaging mitochondrial DNA by free radicals is particularly critical. Unlike nuclear DNA, this one lacks repair mechanisms and high stone protein protection, making it 10 times more vulnerable to damage caused by free radicals. Mitochondrial damage can be so severe that cellular respiration may work differently than it should. This reduces the amount of generated energy while increasing free radicals production. When amount of newly generated energy falls below the critical threshold required for maintaining cells' biological processes, cell death takes place. The first consequence of increased free radicals is depletion of natural antioxidant reserves. Without them, free radicals cause massive damage to important parts of our cells. Peroxidation of cell membrane, along with direct DNA damage, leads to serious impairment of cell function. The damage accumulates slowly, cells with altered genetic information divide, and after some time, whole organism ages more rapidly or even serious disease occur. Within a human brain, antioxidant activity is relatively slow. Combined with an excessively high intake of loosely bound iron, this makes the brain more susceptible to free radicals damage. Production of new neurons is very slow, so instead of malignancy, iron risk represents accelerated development of neurodegenerative diseases such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. Psychological stress, as well as physical overload, activates a sympathetic response of our nervous system that mobilizes us to fight or flight. This increases the oxidative stress of body cells. Sufficient rest suppresses sympathetic activity, which slows free radicals production, thus helping to retain good health during difficult times. To prevent penetration of dangerous substances into the brain, blood vessels are coated with a special protective layer separating bloodstream substances from sensitive environment of nerve cells. This blood-brain barrier is formed by astrocytes terminal processes, which are connected by basement membrane with endothelial cells of blood vessels. A portion of mobile phone radiation activates heat shock proteins which stabilizes stress fibers. As a result, 
Cells are secreting more fibroblast growth factor molecules, stimulating cell division, leading to cell shrinking. This creates a free space between cells and exposes the basement membrane. Substances from the bloodstream can then penetrate into the sensitive environment of nerve cells, whether they are toxins, microbes or unwanted compounds. Due to the increased blood-brain barrier permeability, unwanted molecules can damage brain tissue, which may manifest in many ways, from headaches and psychological changes through increased risk of inflammation up to the accelerated development of neurodegenerative diseases. The strongest effect on increasing blood-brain barrier permeability exhibits mobile signal 10,000 times weaker than current limits allow in the Czech Republic. Between the inner part of neural cell and the outer intercellular space exists an electrical potential which is established by different concentration of electrically charged particles on both sides of a cellular membrane. The inner part is relatively negatively charged with respect to the intercellular space. To maintain this membrane potential, the cell uses ion channels, proteins shaped to form a cavity in cell membrane allowing natural movement of electrically charged particles either inside or outside the cell. Individual ions tend to travel to areas with their lower concentration. If the intercellular space contains more sodium than cells interior, sodium ions will tend to travel inside until their amounts are equal on both sides. Ions are attracted to regions of opposite polarity. A positively charged potassium cation will be attracted to the cell's interior despite higher potassium concentration. This makes the inner space even more positive so that potassium ion current will weaken until both forces get balanced. The balance of all ions then establishes the resting potential of the cell membrane. Voltage-gated channels contain spiral domains that function as biological voltage sensors attracted by more negative areas of the cell. As the membrane potential decreases, domains change their position to open the channel to floating ions. If the membrane potential begins to decrease, voltage-gated ion channels continually open, causing the ion influx into the cell. An action potential arises gradually opening ion channels along the nerve fiber, thus carrying information along its length and transmitting it to another nerve cell. The external electromagnetic field may activate spiral domains, causing ion channels to open. Sodium cations can then move into the cell's interior, thereby reducing the membrane potential, which can induce an action potential. In the presence of a static magnetic field, an alternating electromagnetic field may cause movement of free ions which will be attracted in a certain direction according to their polarity. 
suitable combination of alternating field intensity and frequency creates harmony between total external field and ions of particular element. During this ion cyclotron resonance, the effect of external fields is maximal. It can be so strong that ions movement will prevail in one direction, in accordance with the field instead of chaotic movements caused by ions own thermal oscillations. When such ion cloud is moving near spiral domains, it can force ion channels to open. The continuous movement of electrically charged particles generates an electromagnetic noise that causes fluctuations of membrane potential amplitude. The external electromagnetic field, which can reduce the membrane potential, doesn't act alone but always simultaneously with natural noise of the cell. When both forces together reduce membrane potential below the critical threshold, a stochastic resonance occurs and produces an action potential spreading through the nervous system. The crucial influence on the frequency of occurring artificial action potentials may have physiological state of our cells. Diseased cells have decreased membrane potential and higher noise, therefore stochastic resonance occurs more often. Our body thus becomes more sensitive to harmful effects of electromagnetic fields during an illness. The human eye brings light to the retina containing several types of light-sensitive cells. Rods and cones on the inner side transform visible light into an electrochemical information which is collected on the outer side by ganglion cells. Neurons using action potentials for sending information to the brain for further processing and creating an image of surrounding environment. Some ganglion cells contain a light-sensitive pigment melanopsin, allowing direct interaction with electromagnetic radiation in the form of a blue light. Unlike rods and cones, they react slowly but provide long-lasting information about intensity of an ambient light. They send it through action potentials to the suprachiasmatic nucleus responsible for controlling circadian rhythms, the fluctuation of daily activity. The suprachiasmatic nucleus evaluates whether it is day or night and accordingly adjusts the biological processes by controlling production of important hormones. A bluish daylight inhibits melatonin production, which, in addition to ensuring good sleep, also functions as a super strong antioxidant. It is produced in the dark, mostly during the night, the time of rest and regeneration. During the day, a serotonin is produced instead for ensuring our daily activity. An external electromagnetic radiation significantly reduces the melatonin production even in the pure darkness. This can result in sleep disorders, impaired quality of regeneration and increased oxidative stress which increases the risk of malignancy. It is therefore advisable to minimize the presence of an electromagnetic radiation sources at night, so our body has the opportunity to restore energy for the next day. 
A body water is not just some chaotic accumulation of molecules, but it forms various structures, allowing it to influence many biological processes. We know that the negatively charged oxygen will attract the positively charged hydrogen of a nearby water molecule, thus forming a hydrogen bond between them. Many water molecules can use these bonds to form a relatively stable structure, a cluster. Individual molecules may leave it, but are immediately replaced by others, so the cluster structure is preserved, in the same manner a sea wave is still a wave, although its individual molecules are constantly changing. Clusters can combine to form extensive structures up to the most complex superclusters. The water structured in this way exhibits different physical properties compared to the chaotic water mass. The more stable structure the water has, the more distinctive these differences are. Water clusters facilitate the initial phase of protein folding into their active shape in which proteins can perform their biological function. They also participate in cellular communication by moving protein nuclei over long distances. Clusters form various shapes according to the substances bonded to them. Nucleobase pair sequences affect the shape of adhering clusters, which help nuclear enzymes to identify specific DNA sequences. Electromagnetic fields can affect the spatial arrangement of clusters. The self-symmetrical fractal structure of superclusters allows them to simultaneously respond to a large number of frequencies while maintaining relatively small dimensions. External electromagnetic fields may break with hydrogen bonds, causing disintegration of clusters into a chaotic water mass. This changes the physical properties of body water, leading to biological changes. Breaking hydrogen bonds of water molecules surrounding an enzyme may lead to its denaturation, after which the enzyme is not able to perform its biological function anymore. Cluster disintegration also impairs cellular communication as the resulting destination of a proton nucleus in a chaotic water mass will be significantly different than in the structured water. If an external electromagnetic radiation causes disintegration of clusters bonding with nuclear bases, it will cause difficulties for nuclear enzymes to identify the search DNA sequence which may be missed.
are a cluster disintegration caused by external electromagnetic fields can transform a significant portion of our body water into a chaotic water mass with different physical properties. This leads to an impaired quality of cellular processes. Long-term exposition leads to damage accumulation which may cause health impairments. An uncontrolled exposure to an electromagnetic radiation may lead to impaired health, quality of life and development of serious illnesses like exposure to toxic substances in our environment. For maintaining high quality of life, we do not need to get rid of electronic devices and smart technologies using our daily activities. At the same time, we need to be aware of possible health risks inherent to their usage and implement appropriate measures mitigating these risks. Based on the current level of scientific knowledge, it is best to follow the precautionary principle considering all artificial electromagnetic fields being harmful to a human health. Setting hygienic limits, legislative anchoring and assessment of complicated situations should be based upon the ALARA principle ensuring the lowest possible levels of electromagnetic fields with which electronic devices still perform their function. This needs to be ensured in the law by responsible authorities. Now in their hands is our health, health of our children and health of all future generations.